Hey everyone and good Monday evening to you. It is 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. We call this video Weather for Weather Geeks. In tonight's video, hopefully we have a lot of non-weather geeks uh, watching as well because we have a, you know, potentially a fairly fairly a serious weather situation uh, emerging as we head through the overnight tonight and we have to take the weather pretty seriously for a different reason coming up on Wednesday. So in this video we'll talk about both things, but first things first, let's talk about the severe weather threat overnight tonight. Thankfully on Sunday, the severe weather threat did not materialize locally. We had some ingredients, but they didn't all come together. Uh, when we were baking that cake, we didn't have one or two key ingredients. And so uh, thankfully, severe weather did not happen on Sunday. That was always kind of a tricky forecast. This forecast for tonight is a higher confidence forecast that will have thunderstorms and some pretty loud winds probably. Will we get in on wind gusts of 60, 70 plus miles per hour and things like that? Well, we don't know that for certain, but the potential is certainly there. This is a look at the current risks, uh, the categories I should say, from the uh, Storm Prediction Center. If you think of our severe weather risk scale as a one to five scale, we have a lot of days during the year in our part of the country that we're under this level one or level two. It's not very often though that we are under three or higher. And Northwest Ohio this evening is at a level four, moderate risk for severe weather. This zone through here, including the Toledo area, this zone has the highest chance of seeing uh, destructive winds and even some tornadic activity. But you'll notice most of the state of Ohio is at least in that level three. Uh, the chances of severe weather definitely decrease in far northeast Ohio, northwest PA as well. But let's not split hairs too much. These outlooks, you know, a lot of, a lot of times when I, I show these outlooks on social media, I get a lot of comments and questions. Oh, Columbiana County's in this outlook, but Mahoning's in this one. These outlooks are not you know, kind of designed to be kind of county by county outlooks. Um, weather's all about gradations. So while you see some sharp lines here, the difference between the risk categories is just a straight line. Uh, it really, in a perfect world, would be more like a gradation because overall the idea tonight is that the severe weather risk gradually gets higher the farther south and west you are, gradually gets lower the farther north and east you are. But it's uh, definitely an elevated risk everywhere. Now, as of this recording, it is 7.04 p.m. Uh, severe thunderstorm watches are out for uh, the Columbus area on south towards the Ohio River. Also, a severe thunderstorm watch for far northwest Ohio, northern Indiana, southwestern Michigan. Tornado watch out in the Chicago area. I would expect uh, later on tonight more severe thunderstorm watches to get just about all of northern Ohio at some point. It may be after midnight, well after midnight, but I expect most of our TV viewing area to be under a severe thunderstorm watch at some point tonight. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the current radar because most of you will be watching this well afterwards, but we still had some beefy thunderstorms in southern Ohio just after 7 p.m. What we're watching this evening is what's going on out here. Uh, thunderstorms will erupt and start cascading to the south and east. Now, the exact track that this main cluster takes will be very important for how things play out here overnight. A little bit of a southerly track, and we probably miss out on some of the worst weather. Maybe it's more towards Mansfield and, and Cleveland and places like that. But just a little bit more of a northerly track and we'd be kind of in the heart of things and kind of in the bullseye area. I'd say odds favor right now the true destructive wind core being mostly to our west, but I don't have a lot of confidence in that uh, as of this recording. Our confidence should increase in the eventual outcomes as we go deeper into the evening and certainly into the overnight. Now these storms will ride along a pretty intense boundary between fairly stable, kind of muggy air and really unstable, really tropical air. Our dew point locally as of 706, 66, but the dew point in Columbus, a tropical 76. Cincinnati had an 80 degree dew point earlier on today. That is extremely high and very uncomfortable. And it definitely is, you know, aiding in how unstable the atmosphere is in those locations. Now we have some rain cooled air through here right now, but otherwise, you know, ignoring that whole look at the, I mean, some of these instability values or CAPE, convectively available potential energy values, almost kind of peg the top of my color scale up here. You know, we're talking way sky high instability. And these storms that, you know, kind of form an MCS, a mesoscale convective system, or perhaps a derecho, um, they love to ride along the northern fringes of that instability gradient. So just looking at this map, you would expect 
the core of our storms to track kind of like this. There's going to be some variation and some north and south wiggles, but that's the general idea, is along the northern fringes of an instability boundary. That's where you, you probably look for this thing to track. Now, as we head through the overnight tonight, uh, maybe a shower before 1 o'clock, a thunderstorm, a possibility, but the main show here is deep into the night. We're talking 2 o'clock and afterwards for most of us. Uh, it'll get pretty loud, I think, by 3 and 4 o'clock. As we go on the air on WFMJ today, tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., I would expect there to still be some storms in the vicinity. They may be pushing out um, by 5 to 6 a.m., but probably still some in the vicinity, and then things will quiet down in a hurry tomorrow morning. Now, wind is easily the primary threat tonight. And, you know, these gusts in the core of, of uh, this complex, and that may be just to our west, it may be overhead, the, the gusts of 60, 70 plus miles per hour will be a possibility. And, you know, you're talking about low-end tornadic activity or, or the equivalent of that when you talk about gusts like that. An EF0 tornado has winds of 60 miles per hour and up. EF1 starts at about 80-ish. I don't have the chart in front of me, but it's about 80-ish. Um, and if, so if you get a 75, 80 mile per hour gust from straight line winds, it can do the same kind of stuff as a tornado can. So uh, any severe thunderstorm warning that is issued in northern Ohio tonight should be treated as if it were a tornado warning because chances are in some places there will be some wind gusts that rival low end tornadoes. So again, think of this as kind of a gradient. Don't worry too much about where these exact lines are on our map delineating between the risk categories. Just know that north and east, lower risks, south and west, higher risks, but the risk is not zero everywhere. In fact, if you can see us on TV, uh, we have a, you know an elevated risk of severe weather, mostly between two and six. Wind damage, flash flooding, uh, definitely a concern. So the wind gets all, the, uh, all, all our headlines, but I don't want to discount the possibility of flash flooding overnight because while the initial band that moves through may be moving pretty quickly, we may have some problems with what we call back building, with new activity forming in the very unstable air on the back side of that main cluster. Uh, I'm not sure about that yet. I think the chances of that happening are higher to our west, but I, I don't want to discount some problems with flooding here and there. Isolated tornado I have on here. Now, there's going to be a lot of wind energy aloft later on tonight. Most of this will manifest itself in strong winds being pulled down to the surface, and it's just straight line winds. But there's enough wind shear that we can't discount the possibility of an isolated tornado across our region. I do think the tornado risk is highest kind of in this zone, Akron, Mansfield, New Philly, up to Cleveland. It's not as high around here, but it's not zero either. Our significant tornado parameter kind of peaks maybe 2, 3 in the morning, maybe south of Route 30 especially. Um, none of these numbers are super high, but they're high enough to get our attention. And just like the overall severe weather risks, the isolated tornado risk is probably highest mostly south and west of Youngstown. But uh, again, we don't want to rule that out as well. So get ready for this. This is going to be happening when most of us are sleeping. Not me, I'm going to be here. Uh, but most of you will be sleeping when this is happening. So you want to be prepared for the possibility of being without power for a while. If these kinds of winds happen, no doubt there's going to be a ton of power outages. So make sure your devices are charged up. Um, if you go to bed early tonight, that should give you plenty of time uh, to stick your phone on the charger and before the power goes out, it, or five in the morning, you should have you know, plenty of juice in your phone by that point. But if you're more of a night owl and you're going to be up later, take this evening and plug stuff in. Plug in your tablet. Plug in your, uh, your uh, smartphone. If you have a NOAA weather radio, uh, check that battery backup in case uh, you don't have power but still need the weather radio later on tonight. Medical devices, always a good idea to have those charged up as well. And hopefully all of you are using the Storm Tracker 21 app. Make sure the alerts are turned on up in the upper right. Click on the three little lines. That's where you'll find the settings. You can modify those settings to uh, only alert you for certain types of warnings. Don't have all your stuff on silent though. If we have really bad weather late tonight, you're going to be want to be you're going to want to be woken up and alerted and maybe find your safe place. Remember, severe thunderstorm warnings may not be just run of the mill severe thunderstorm warnings. They may pack the equivalent of a low-end tornado warning, and that means that you probably don't want to stay in your bedroom. You probably want to find your safe place. So make sure that you can be woken up late tonight um, by any number of means. None of those should be from a siren because, of course, you're sleeping inside, 
And tornado sirens are outdoor tornado sirens. They're not designed to be heard indoors. Don't rely on being woken up by a siren later on tonight. All right, so the story then becomes the heat. We're, we're quiet Tuesday afternoon. This warm front lifts to our north and east on Wednesday. This will be the hottest day of the year easily on Wednesday. And Thursday will be just about as hot. Uh, although a cold front approaches, maybe a couple of gusty thunderstorms by the end of the afternoon Thursday, and this front will unlock a much more comfortable air mass by Friday and the weekend. Our current forecast for Wednesday is 93. We hit that once last year. We actually had a high of 94 in 2020, but it's been 10 years since we've been 95 or higher. I don't think we'll get that hot on Wednesday, but we'll make a run at it. Uh, the record high is 93, by the way, on Wednesday, so our current for forecast is a, a record tire for the 15th of June. It's been 10 years since we've had a really severe life-threatening heat wave across our region. Now, I, I say life-threatening, and I mean that in a general sense. For sensitive groups, for weather-sensitive individuals, weather can be heat can be life-threatening at a you know lower threshold than for uh, those of us who are a little bit healthier. So the heat index, when you factor in what the temperature will be with how high the dew points will be, that heat index gets up to about 100 or so, maybe even 102, 103 in some spots. Wednesday afternoon, and not much better Thursday before a big cool down by Friday and the weekend. So uh, the heat index or apparent temperature, it's all about how efficiently sweat can or cannot evaporate off of your skin. Your body has an internal air conditioning. You sweat, that sweat evaporates, and so you get a little layer of cooling from a evaporative cooling right on your uh, right on the edge of your skin. Well, sweat does not evaporate as efficiently when it's really, really humid outside. And so to your body, even though the air temperature might be 93, to your body, it's more like 100 or so because your body has a harder time cooling itself off. If you have a job that requires you being outdoors, if you're a roofer, and if you're in construction, anything where you're exerting yourself outdoors, just be ready for some common sense Wednesday and Thursday. Take more breaks and stay hydrated. Uh, those things are very, very important. And this is, you know, surprising to a lot of people. You think of hurricanes, you think of tornadoes and lightning and, and things like that. Heat is the number one killer when it comes to weather-related fatalities in recent years and over a 30-year average as well. Typically around here, our heat episodes are pretty brief, but we've got two pretty nasty days coming up Wednesday into Thursday, and then whoosh, Friday in the weekend. I can't say enough words about how nice it'll be compared to midweek by Friday and the weekend. Dew points in the 40s by Father's Day, and it'll be dry Saturday and Sunday. Long video. Thanks for sticking with me tonight. I'll have much more in the way of updates throughout the evening. I'm going to be here just about all night. Andrew's going to come in early, and we're going to uh, keep you uh, updated on air and online throughout the course of the night tonight. Stay safe. Get ready for a potentially nasty couple of hours in the wee hours of Tuesday morning, and I'll see you back here Tuesday evening to recap things on Weather for Weather Geek.